Hello guys. Welcome to the weekend edition. I started to do this on Friday and then stuff got crazy so it looks like Saturdays are going to be it. So I'm going to talk about a few things today. First is that three state California thing where they're trying to break it up. It's actually like a six state thing and I'll have links in the description to the stuff that I'm using. And then Alfie and Charlie. Of course, I'm using my notes here. And Count Dankula, just the state of that. Assembly Bill 2943 and Christian Swingers. Yes, I cannot believe I'm saying that either. All right, so the three state California. The, the idea is to split California up into three, or really what it is, six different states so that the... Basically what's being said, this guy's saying that what he wants to do is make sure that the taxes go to the to the people the best. So he wants to split it up into six different states. Now, I'm not like totally against that. I think it might actually be a good idea, but the, but I don't know what it would do to like the House of Representatives and Congress and things like that. How many people will we then be sending? Um, how does it split it up? Because basically the way it is now because Hollywood, San Francisco, I think all of those areas there have basically they ride the, they basically choose the congressman and stuff because of the, uh, how many people they have in there. Or they choose how many, they determine how many come basically. And that would take Hollywood down, I think. I'm not sure. Depend like depending on which article you read depends on how it would affect it. And for me, it's just sort of like I don't really care. This is not something I've heard. Uh, this is not new to me. Basically, it's something I've heard before. I heard when I was a kid. They wanted to split California up for the same reasons, taxes, and so that the people can elect a representative that more represents them. So that could happen. Will it happen? I doubt it. Uh, there's a lot in the in the founding of this country. It was very important for us to all stick together as Americans. So they probably are like, no, if we let you do that, then Texas is going to want to succeed and be Texas, you know, the country of Texas, which again, I'm not opposed to. But they don't want any of that sort of thing happening. I'm not so sure it would do what they say because of the way commerce is already laid out in that area but I don't but I don't know either so excuse me give me your thoughts down at the bottom I'd love to hear them because I just don't I don't see the point to it myself but then again I can't really see anything wrong with it so eh whatever excuse me I ate some Cajun food that did not agree with me apparently so, Alfie Evans. Alfie Evans is the latest in the many, many, or at least three, I'll say three. Alfie Evans is the latest in a line of people being the example of just what PC culture and just what letting the government run things to the extent that they have in Britain does. Alfie Evans, if you don't know, was a boy who had, he was born December 2015, 2016, and he has a genetic disease, and um, Stephen Molyneux did a really good job describing what's going on with him, what happened to him, etc. And then I have another one that I'll put down in the link, but basically he had a degenerative disease for his brain, where his brain is being eaten away and replaced with basically water, like it's being replaced with spinal fluid. So, the parents, though, wanted to leave with him. The doctors in the area there decided to take it upon themselves that they would not allow Alfie to leave. That he had to die in the hospital, basically. Even though there had been offers from other doctors to try and save his life, to try and work with his degenerative, I cannot say that today, degenerative disease, even though his parents wanted a second opinion, even though they just, you know, some people were saying, just let him go home and die. Why does he have to die in the hospital? Things like that. So to me, this makes me angry because it does appear that the doctors gave up a bit after hearing Stefan and he was reading some information I couldn't find. 
and uh, saying what was happening to the boy. It's a very hard decision for them, but I, but I, but for me, what this is truly is a is a parental rights issue. These parents should have never been blocked from taking that kid. The courts don't get to decide what happens to your children. That should never be a thing. I don't agree with that. And I know a lot of people will bug me for that because what about child abuse and things like that? And I think I have an answer. Like, how should a Christian deal with that, right? And for me, I think the ad, the answer is maybe adoption. But even then, like the government would have to come in and take it. You know, I don't know. I, I am working on that solution basically what I think the best solution is. So <clears throat> this made me really angry because this and the Count Dankula story, which I'm sure everybody's heard of, but if you have it, basically this guy made a joke, he put it out on the internet, somebody got offended by it, then he went to court for that because they have PC laws over there where you can't make, you can't be offensive to people. So he went to court. He almost went to jail. Instead, he ended up paying an 800-pound fine with, uh, I think there's actually some stuff on his record about it now where <clears throat> he has, it's like, uh, the way it was explained to me is it's sort of like having the difference between going to jail for having too many speeding tickets or going to jail for murdering someone. And he does have a record as far as it's like having too many speeding tickets. And I think that's ridiculous. The guy made a joke. And the most telling thing about this is that the court's quote is, the court decides, oh no, I wrote it down. It's just, when I get this way, I get, Brr. the court decides the context of what you say. So no matter what you actually meant, no matter what the joke actually was, the court can then decide, well, that's not the context of what you're saying. You just said something somebody got mad about, and away you go. You either get fined or in jail. That's PC culture. Alfie Evans was not given a chance to go to another doctor before his degenerative disease got worse. And so there you go. Now they just decide that you can't do that. There are people on Twitter saying this isn't the government, this isn't the government. These... Um, it was the doctors and the judges that made the law. The judges are part of the government, guys. It is not, it is not a huge leap to say that. They are part of a government. No matter what kind of government you have, your, judici your judicial system or the system that, that upholds the law that the government, uh, like that your lawmakers put out, are part of the government that, that controls you. And you can tell I'm just so <clears throat> And so that being the case, the government did restrict this child. They did tell parents, no, you can't have your kid. And not because they were abusing him, not because they were doing anything wrong to him, just because they decided, well, it's his time to die now and you can't go and try an elective surgery elsewhere. Even though, you know, he became an Italian citizen, it at least stepped up amazingly, became an Italian citizen. There were Italian doctors who said, we have, a, we have a procedure that may help him. Even though all of that happened because those doctors in that court decided, no, it can't happen. That child was not able to partake in the possibility even of saving his life and his brain. So... This is where, for me, Stefan Molyneux and I disagree. He makes a larger issue about resources. And in this example, we have people willing to share their resources freely. So why was that child not able to go? Why was he kept in the hospital against the, you know, the wishes of the parents? The, these are questions that basically come down to because the government said so. This is why I don't want universal health care. That's why I don't want social health care. This is why I don't want any of that stuff. Because what does happen is that at a certain point, you become, no matter what system you're in, you become worthless. You're not good enough to save. And Alfie Evans, Charlie is a good example of that, another child. And these are all test cases, guys. They're trying to see how far they can go. 
So in every stance, you have to say no. You have to say, no, you can't do this. When they start to try and make laws that say, well, you can't say these offensive things, you have to say, no, yes, I can. Maybe I'll, maybe I will never say them. Excuse me. But the fact is, I get to say them. I'm allowed to, without being fined, without going to jail, because the freedom of speech allows for these hard things to say. Sometimes things that are offensive, or many times, things that are offensive to hear are also true. This is not something people cover too much. I, see, I hear Jordan Peterson say it. I sometimes hear Stefan say it. But it's not said a whole lot. So a lot of times what is offensive is also true. Or sometimes it's just offensive because a person wants to be offensive. You know, you have the free will still, you have the free choice still right now to not associate with that person if that's what you want to do. Not associate with the ideas that this person is putting out. Even here in America still, you have the right to protest them. Those are all the things that you can do. You cannot associate, you cannot support, you can protest. All right? You can do whatever except for, like, murder them or hurt them, basically. If you allow PC culture, all of that goes away. All of it. All of your rights are gone. Because someone over there got offended by something you said. So I just want you guys to think about that. Think about that in your own life, where you've said, I've said offensive things to people. People have said offensive things to me. People have said things that make me angry. They've said things that hurt me. They've said all those things. I'm still alive and I'm fine. And now I know how to handle that. So it, it has developed me also. But think about that. Think about if you said something offensive and maybe didn't even realize it was offensive. The Bible covers this, right? That sometimes people are going to say something and you're not going, they're not going to know that, that that was offensive to you. Okay, so should you be fined for that? No, I do not believe so. Should you go to jail for that? No, absolutely not. No, <laughs> that's ridiculous. But that is what's happening in these European countries where PC has taken over, where you have, you know, basically courts without justice, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, you have all these things going on. So we have to fight for this. Freedom is not freely won. And by that, I mean... You can't just sit around and think you have freedom. Freedom is one every generation, every day, every minute that you fight for it. That is how it's won and that is how it's kept. You have to raise children with the ideas of freedom. You have to go and change minds of your friends and family with the ideas of freedom and the ability to move and do as you will. So that is what I would say with that. It's, it's just the epitome of big government. You should never go to jail for a joke. You should never... Your your children should not be taken from you because you want to try and go get health care somewhere else. You have parental rights. The government does not have parental rights. They did not have that child. They were not given that child. So that's where I'm at with that. I will address the fix for abuse later on in a different video or my solutions video, basically. <laughs> So with that in mind, let's, let's talk about Assembly Bill 2943. Another crazy thing California wants to do, and basically people are calling this the Bible ban. It's not a Bible ban, not, not really. They're not taking Bibles out of schools uh, as far as like taking them out of your hands. They're not doing things like that with this law. What this law does, let me read my notes here. It prohibits the advertising or selling of sexual orientation change effects. Excuse me. And we place books with biblical views of homosexuality or transgenderism, all that stuff, as fraudulent under the state's consumer fraud statute. Sorry, jeez. Never having Cajun from that place again. So, basically, what that means is let's say you're trying to start some kind of What's it called? So you're a psychologist, you're a Christian, you want to have a you want to have a practice. So basically, if someone who's homosexual or transgender comes to your practice, you're not 
you, if you use the Bible, would be considered using fraudulent um, papers. So that means you could lose your license. You're not allowed to do that. You would have to stick within whatever the state deems as appropriate, basically. So where it doesn't ban the Bible from like your daily use, it does ban it in the use of um, official like psych psychology areas. So this is again those little steps. It's it's like the second boil, if you guys know what I mean, as far as the frog. You throw a frog in cold water and you boil him gradually, he never moves because he doesn't even realize he's dead at the end. So because it was a gradual heat. And this is the same thing. This is a gradual heat. Where it's not actually a per se Bible ban, it is a step in the right direction for them, right? Because they don't want the Bible around. They think it's wrong and homophobic and bigoted and all this other nonsense that they believe. So <clears throat> you have to, if you live in California, even if you don't, you can still express, like I said, we still have freedom of speech now. <clears throat> you can still express the absolute idiocy of this and say it's wrong because, you know, if I am a Christian psychologist and I want to use that in my practice and I let people know, right, I mean, I wouldn't just, whatever, um, then I should be able to. And I would say if you are a tr Christian psychologist and you do want to use that, I would say do it anyway. <laughs> um, there's gonna, there is always a point in time in a Christian's life where you just have to decide. I'm either going to live this way or I'm not. This is either the truth or it isn't. And you have to go against, a lot of times, the law, uh, the culture, what people think of you. And that could even be your parents and your close friends. They could think you're crazy. At a certain point, though, you say to yourself, this is the truth and this is how I'm going to live. And so you have to represent that in your life daily. And so that is why I give the advice. It's going to be hard advice for a lot of people because if you use, like I said before, if you use this fraudulent stuff, they can take your license away and then there goes your livelihood. Um, but maybe use it in a subtle way or something, you know, where it's not blatantly Bible, but it is all the concepts inside the Bible. Anyway, I just want to talk about that because... This this is, again, not something that is new to me. This is something else that happened when I was a kid, too, where they tried to take the Bible away, especially in California. <laughs> surprise, surprise. From areas, and I think what they tried to do was take it out of the schools completely where you could not bring it at all. And I don't think that passed. I think that died off. Thank goodness. However... If people do not protest, you know, if people don't protest, and don't say things, they, they just act like it's no big deal and that's fine, then they will begin to get away with this kind of stuff. And they will slowly turn up that heat and boil us away. So what we have to do always is speak out. What we always have to do is stick with what God wants us to do. And we just have to do it no matter what this world does. Daniel in Lion's Den is my go-to for all this kind of stuff, right? Because Daniel, being a government employee, <laughs> came in and did his government employee job, went home and prayed in front of the window as he does. When it became time for him to worship the king, because that was the law of the land, he said, no, I'm not going to do that. And he didn't make a big deal out of it. He just didn't do it. And he just went home and prayed like he always did. He gets thrown into the lion's den, and what happens to him? Well, some angels come along and protect him from the lions. When he gets out of there, the king says, your God is the God, you know, is God. And we will all follow him now. And this is ultimately, as Christians, one of the, it's, it's our highest goal, basically. Our highest goal is to show people Jesus is real. Jesus is God by just living our lives peacefully and going about and doing what God says. You don't have to be rude about it. You don't have to be combative about it. You just don't do it. Or you just do do it, <laughs> depending on the situation, right? 
So this is something, again, I don't really hear too much about in church, and I think we is, we need to talk about this. We, we, that needs to get out there, okay? So there's something there I want to talk about. Christian swingers. Yep. I could not believe, I thought this was a parody. I looked around to see, figure out if this is like from The Onion or something, because I couldn't believe it. Okay, so beyond the common sense reasons why this is obviously wrong within the Christian con belief system. Um, I guess I'll touch on this a little bit. Basically, Christianity believes in one man, one woman for marriage. So not one man, another man's wife. That's like explicitly said no. The other reason is when you're married, your body no longer belongs to you in the Christian religion. In the Christian religion, a man for example, I'm married to my husband. My husband's body belongs to me. My body belongs to him. And we must agree together to do anything. You're not to have sexual relations with anyone else. You are bonded. God bonds you together. So when you try and go out here and do it with multiple people, you, <laughs> you basically begin to destroy yourself slowly. Because that's not how we're meant. It's one at a time. If, I, if my husband died and I wanted to get married again, I could do that. One at a time. <laughs> and not one at a time. Like, I'm married to this one and five minutes later I can go have another one. No. That's not how this works. So, it's blatantly against the Bible, right? They're saying that they are Christian swingers to bring people to God. All right. No, you can't bring people to God by doing the opposite of what God says. That doesn't work. Okay? And it's just, my thoughts as I was reading this is, just why, right? Just why, guys? Come on. <laughs> when it comes to outreach, okay, these Christian swingers are like, we're reaching the world and all this stuff like we're supposed to. When it comes to outreach, you still have to stay within the parameters of God. Outreach is not just do whatever crazy thing you can do. You still have parameters for that. He gives you ways to show the world who God is. One of them is to go out and say what God has done for you. Another one is to pray. Another one is evangelism, right? Where you go and you move around, you and your family or just you, go and move around into different areas. And then that is where you go. You set up a Bible meeting and you let people come. And the whole point to coming to this is just to preach the gospel, the good news, that Jesus came and died. It's not like a church scenario. You're trying to convert and then make a church. Excuse me, goodness. Dang, Cajun, please. Um, so, <laughs> that's different from like a church scenario, which is for people who already believe and are already trying to live this way. We cannot follow the world in our gimmickness and in our, I'll just use anything to get you here, when it comes to our outreach. The Bible says that the world will know who you are by how you love each other, by how you love the body, and by your good works. All right. So if you start your outreach with that, you will do well. If you start your outreach with something as ridiculous as Christian swingers, you won't do well. <laughs> you will not attract Christians. You will attract people who have possibly the label, but not the actual followers. There were many people when Jesus was walking who would follow him around for a little while and then he would say something like, drink my blood and remember me. And they would leave because it was too intense. <laughs> he would say things like, you have to hate your mother, your father, your children, and everything else and follow me. And they would leave because it was too intense. And of course, he doesn't mean hate, so don't take that the wrong way. Um, I hate it when people take that thing the wrong way. I've had so many conversations like, well, you say he says you're a pain people. No, that, that's not what he's talking about. But anyway, 
we guys are in the world, but we're not of it. We, we don't outreach the same way we do for their things. We don't do this. Okay. So Christian swingers, ain't eh, wrong. <laughs> You're doing it wrong already, guys, just by being swingers. Just by going against it. Uh, the state of the world, guys, has come to the point, really, where the Bible talks about how things will just fall apart. And so it is so important for us as Christians to come together, pray for each other, support each other, help each other. Get out there and, and evangelize. Go out there and help people. Go out there and pray for people. Go out there and be God's light, like he says. It's so important. This PC culture has developed a lot of times because children are left alone. So they think, well... I'll think whatever, you know, you just think whatever you think. And then usually that ends up within the sin nature. This will take care of me, so I don't have to. And then that's where they go. <laughs> we have to realize as the body of Christ that as we sit in our conferences, as we sit in our churches, and as we sit and as we sit and as we sit, the world's going to hell in a handbasket outside. They're going, you know, without Christ. I'm not saying every church is like this and every Christian is like this. Some people are doing what they're supposed to do. I'm just trying to encourage you today to go out and figure out what you're supposed to be doing. How are you supposed to evangelize? Where are you supposed to go? Has God given you a calling that maybe you have not done because of fear? Which I understand, believe me. <clears throat> but you will not do. If that's the case, guys, pray about it. Ask him for that faith that, that goes beyond all understanding. That peace that goes beyond all understanding. The reason why it says it goes beyond all understanding is because you're in situations where you should not have peace. You should not have faith. You should not have these things because it's so hard. All right. It is a battle. It is a battle within ourselves to fight our sin nature. And then outside it is a battle against the forces uh, has the principalities of darkness so go out today you guys and fight the good fight start by reading your bible start by praying and i will see you in the next one i'll pray for all of you if there's anything that i can pray for you can put it down in the comments if there's anything else you'd like to talk about put it down in the comments and i will for sure get to it. I might not get to it today. It might be tomorrow, but, but I will definitely get to it. I look at all my comments. So till then guys, just remember in order for evil to flourish, it only takes good men doing nothing. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.